This is the section 4.4, Properties of Logarithms Notes. Um, so since I cannot be in class for this lesson on 4.4, I made you a video. If it's getting long, I may split it into two videos, but wanted to make sure that you heard some explanation of how these notes work, um, since it's something that you may not have seen before, okay? Um, properties of logarithms, we already talked about these four properties right here in 4.3. You can go back and review those as you need to, okay? But we're adding three new properties in 4.4, okay? First of those, uh, and remember, uh, argument always has to be positive. All that stuff is still in play. These four properties are still in play, okay? All right, product property says that if you have two things that are being multiplied together in the argument position, so here X and Y are being multiplied together, you can rewrite that as two separate logs. So we could say log base B of X plus log base B of Y. So in other words, if you have a single log where there's a product, things, two things being multiplied together in your argument, you could write that as two separate logs that are being added together. By the same token, if you had two separate logs that were being added together, you could rewrite as a single log where you just multiply those arguments together. And we use that both directions, okay? Sometimes we go from one log to two. Sometimes we go from two logs to one, just depending on what we're trying to do in a particular problem. So we need to do it both ways, okay? I'll show you an example of why this works in a second, but there's also a proof in your book if you want to see it, okay? Quotient property, along those same lines, if your argument had two things that were being divided, okay, so here X and Y are being divided in the argument position, you can rewrite that as two separate logs that are being subtracted. So in other words, I can take log base B of X and subtract log base B of Y. Okay? It does not mean subtraction and division are the same thing. It's the argument that was being divided. So we can write it as two separate logs that are being subtracted. Okay? Same logic. If you have two logs that are being subtracted, you could rewrite it as one log where the arguments are being divided. And then the last property, we kind of hinted at that the other day. We said if you've got a log property, uh, I'm sorry, if you've got a log with an exponent in the argument, that, argu uh, that exponent can just come down front. So in other words, I can pull this P down in front of my log base B of X, which is kind of cool and that's pretty powerful. Sometimes you want to go, uh, you want to take that exponent and put it in front of the log. Sometimes if you have a coefficient in front of a log, you know you could just put that coefficient up as an exponent in the argument position. So again, that property goes both ways, okay? All right, let me kind of show you that these are true, that I'm not just making this up, okay? All right, so here's a case. They've given us uh, 4 times 8 is our argument. So we know that we could write this by that log uh, product property for logs. We can rewrite this as log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of 8, okay? Now, remember, log base 2 of 4 and log base 2 of 8, those are just numbers, okay? Hopefully, they're pretty numbers. They're not really ugly decimals like some of these guys were over here, okay? Because um, I think 2 and 4 are going to be um, work out to be nice in exponential form, okay? So remember, log base 2 of 4, in the back of our minds, we're going, okay, 2 to the something equals 4. Oh, 2 squared. So log base 2 of 4 is really the number 2. Okay, if you needed to type log base 2 of 4 in your calculator to verify that, you could. Plus log base 2 of 8. Well, remember 2 to the something equals 8. Yeah, 3. 2 to the third is 8. So this is really, log base 2 of 4 is really the number 2. Log base 2 of 8 is really the number 3. And when you add them together, you get 5. Okay, well, great. How do I know that that's really true? Well, if you think about this other one in a different way, do you agree 4 times 8 is 32? So really, at the beginning here, they were saying log base 2 of 32. Well, is log base 2 of 32 a nice, pretty number? I bet it is. 2 to the something equals 32. Well, how many times do I have to multiply 2 together to get 32? 2 times 2 is 4. Times a third 2 is 8 times a fourth 2 is 16, times a fifth 2 is 32. So 2 to the fifth power is 32. So this log base 2 of 32 is really just the number 5. Okay. Now, 
in this case, I think it's faster to say, oh, 4 times 8 is 32 and work out log base 2 of 32. But hopefully it proves to you the concept that you could have worked it out separately as log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of 8. That either approach you took to this problem, you would get the same answer of 5. And that matters because later, for example, log base 5 of 7 is not a pretty number. But maybe if I multiply this 7 times my argument over here, I might get a number that works out a little friendlier. Okay? Uh, and this example 2 here is a great example of that. Log base 6 of 4 is not pretty. Okay? You type that in your calculator. Log base 6 of 4 is a horrible decimal. Okay? And then I'm supposed to somehow know what log base 6 of 9 is and add those and get together. It's going to be terrible. But if these are two logs with the same base, I could rewrite it as log base 6 of whatever 4 times 9 is. And 4 times 9, oh, that's 36. Oh, so really I'm doing log base 6 of 36. Oh, well, log base 6 of 36, that's not so bad. That's convenient. 6 to the something equals 36. Oh, that's 6 squared. So this log base 2 of 36 is just the number 2. So here's a case where it was, you know, we could have combined them together, or here's a case where it was more helpful to combine them together, or you could work them out separately, okay? All right. Here's another one. So we're adding two logs together. They didn't write the base, but we know it's implied to be 10. So we can multiply those arguments together. x times x plus 1. Okay. And that whole thing is an argument, so I'm going to put a big old set of parentheses around that to show, hey, that entire x times x plus 1, that whole thing is my argument. And then I could distribute that x, so I'd have log of x squared plus x. And again, I'm going to put parentheses around that x squared plus x because it shows that that whole thing, the entire x squared plus x, is my argument. Okay? This is going to come in really handy in 4.5 when we get to some equations. If you have two separate logs, it's a lot more convenient to only have one. So multiplying those arguments together is helpful. And I like to put my entire x squared plus x in a set of parentheses to show that that whole thing is an argument. Without those parentheses, someone might think that only the x squared was the argument and the x was not part of the argument, but just some random thing added at the end. So it's nice to put your whole argument in parentheses, okay? All right, uh, here's one. We've got two uh, logs added together, so we can multiply those arguments. Note, this one also uses that power property. See how there's this 2 right here? So that power property says, ooh, you could pull that exponent up. So log base 5 of 7 plus log base 5 of x squared. That x squared is my argument based on that power property. Now that I don't have any coefficients, I have two logs. I can rewrite it as a single log, log base 5 of 7x squared. My 7 and x squared can multiply together. Again, I like to put that argument in parentheses to show people that it's not just the 7 that's the argument, but it's the entire 7x squared. Here we're going to use that same uh, product property. Notice how we have multiple uh, parts of our argument here. Since they're being multiplied, we can separate them. We could say log 2 plus log x plus log y. So we're able to take a single log and rewrite it as you know three separate logs being added together. Okay. Here, number six, log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of y. So this is very similar to what we just did, but notice this first part, how the base and the argument are the same. Remember, anytime our base and argument are the same, that whole thing is worth 1. So this is really the number 1. Log base 2 of 2 is really the number 1. So 1 plus log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of y. Okay? So they just asked us in these directions to kind of use that product of log, uh, property product, uh, product property rather, sorry. So sometimes it's handy to split it apart into multiple logs. Sometimes you take multiple logs and you can condense them into one. So we just want to get comfortable that you can kind of do that either way. And you'll have to, uh, need to do both of them at different points. Okay. All right. Um, so 
I think there's one on the homework like this where they show, hey, a single argument, but it's two things multiplied together. We could call that ln of 3 plus ln of a plus b. Okay, so um, I had two different things being multiplied together in my argument, so I wrote it as two separate logs being added together. Now, occasionally I have people that want to split this a, oops, sorry, sorry about that. Um, so my ln of 3, and then I had my ln of the a plus b. The 3 and the a plus b were being multiplied together, so I could split it apart as two separate logs. Now, occasionally, and I think there's one um, on the homework where they you know, try to trick you into doing this, Sometimes I have people that want to separate this A plus B. They want to say, ooh, ln of A plus ln of B. We can't do that because the A and the B are not being multiplied. They're being added. So I cannot split this ln of A plus B. I cannot split that any further. Okay? I can only split things apart when they're being multiplied. 3 was being multiplied by A plus B, so I could separate the argument of 3 from the argument of A plus B. But I can't separate the A plus B. Okay? All right, next group here is quotient properties. If they've given us one log, let's see if we can separate it into two. If they've given us two logs, let's see if we can combine them into one, okay? So notice here we'll have log base 2 of 64 minus log base 2 of 16. We can separate a quotient into two separate logs if we write minus in between, okay? Log base 2 of 64, that's going to be a number. 2 to the something is 64, okay, and that's a 6, 2 to the 6 is 64. So log base 2 of 64 is the number 6, minus log base 2 of 16, so 2 to the something is 16, that's 4, and then when you subtract you'll get the number 2. Notice what we could have done here is to say, oh, 64 divided by 16, that's 4. So we could have said, oh, this is really log base 2 of 4, because 64 divided by 16 is 4. And then you could have said, oh, 2 to the something equals 4. Oh, 2 squared is 4. And sure enough, working out that way, you still would have got 2, same as this way. Okay, so it's just kind of proof of concept that when you have a, a quotient in your argument position, you can write them as two separate logs that are being subtracted. Okay. Here's a case where we do have two separate logs being subtracted. Log base 6 of 108, log base 6 of 3. Um, I don't think that log base 6 of 3 is going to be a convenient number. Okay, that one's going to be kind of an ugly one if you type log base 6 of 3 in your calculator. But what we can do is say, ooh, if there's separate logs being subtracted, we can work out 108 divided by 3 and have a single log. Okay? Well, 108 divided by 3 works out nice. 108 divided by 3 is 36. So this is really log base 6 of 36. And log base 6 of 36 is the whole number 2. 6 squared is 36. So that whole thing works out to be 2. If you had typed this in your calculator, it would have given you the same thing. But I want you to get comfortable with the properties because sometimes they don't have all numbers. Sometimes they've got variables in them. So we need to be comfortable with how to split those up. Okay? All right. Still working. Um, they, here was one where we had a single log, so they wanted us to use the quotient property to split it up. Here's one where we have uh, multiple logs, so we can use that quotient property to, co to combine them together. So this will be ln of, since we've got a subtraction here, we'll take the first argument, divide it by the second one. And again, I would like to put parentheses around that because I want people to recognize that the entire thing is the argument. Okay. Here's one we have a quotient, so we can split them apart. Log base 7 of z minus log base 7 of 49. I can't do anything with log base 7 of z, but log base 7 of 49 is the number 2. Okay, 7 to the second gives us 49, so this is the number 2. Okay, now, remember a while ago when I told you that I like to put my whole argument in parentheses. The argument here is just the z. The 2 is not part of this argument, okay? So be careful. I personally would not write it this way. I would either put just my z in parentheses to show people that z was the only argument, 2 is a separate thing, not part of the argument, or another option is to put the negative 2 at the beginning plus log base 7 of z, and that way people don't accidentally interpret this 2 to be part of your argument, okay? All right, uh, number 12 here, log base 7 of A minus log base 7 of 14. 
And people are really tempted to say, ooh, log by 7 of 14, that's 2, because they want to say, oh, 7 times 2 is 14. But remember, it's exponential. So 7 to the something equals 14. It won't be a 2. 7 squared is not 14, it's 49, okay? So log by 7 to 14 is a number, but it's going to be one of those really ugly decimals. So this is probably the best that we can do. Next one here, we can say log 100 minus log x plus y. Okay, now notice there was not a base given. It's implied to be 10. So I have an implied base 10 on each of these. I don't need to write the 10s, okay? Um, x plus y. I cannot split this up any further. Okay, remember we have to have a quotient or we have to have a product. If we have a, an addition in our argument, we can't split that up. So that's going to stay as log of x plus y. Log 100, though, we can do something with. Remember the base is 10. So 10 to the something equals 100. Oh, 10 squared is 100. So log of 100 is the number 2. So 2 minus log of x plus y. Next group here, power property. Remember, power property says that you can pull those exponents down front. So this 3 can come down front. So 3 log base 2 of 2. And hopefully you remember from the other day that when your argument and your base are the same, that whole thing is 1. So this really just makes 3 times 1, which is just 3. So we actually learned the other day, we said, oh, if your argument and base are the same, cancel, leaves just the 3. But here's a different way to think about it. That power property says, oh, take that exponent down front, 3 times log base 2 of 2. And since the argument and the ex, uh, sorry, argument and base match, that's when that cancels or just leaves you with a 1. It doesn't really cancel. It leaves you with a 1. It's worth the number 1. And then you've got your 3 times 1, which is 3. So a couple different ways to think about that same idea here. Okay? So here I can pull my 7 out front as a coefficient. Log, I'm sorry, 7 times log. I don't know if I could write, that would be helpful. 7 times log base 5 of 3. Log base 5 of 3 is a number, but it's going to be one of those terrible, horrible decimals, so let's just leave it like this, okay? Still doing that power property. Notice this one has a coefficient, so we can pull that 2 up as an exponent on our 4. Log base 7 of 4 squared. 4 squared is 16, so this is log base 7 of 16. Um, Log base 7 of 16 is a number, okay? All those logs with, with a number for the argument, number, number for the base, those are numbers, but it's going to be a terrible, horrible decimal. So I would probably just leave this unless they told you to type it in and round to whatever place value, okay? All right, so here, notice they put parentheses around their argument, which is fine, okay? Sometimes they do, sometimes they, uh, some, a couple of them they didn't, like they didn't put the parentheses around this argument, but that's okay. We can still bring that 5 down front, so 5 ln of x. Okay, we don't know what x is, so this is the best we can do. In this case, though, when that 5 comes down, 5 ln e, remember ln e is 1 because the argument and the base are the same thing. So this is 5 times 1 or just 5. Okay, and that we talked about that before as well. If you have an exponent on that e, that's all it's going to leave you with because that argument and base are the same, so they're just going to leave you with the 5. Okay. Here's one, I think there's a couple of homework questions where they have square root symbols. So I would recommend that you call this log of x to the two-thirds. Remember, whatever your exponent is, that's your numerator. And then whatever the index number on the radical is, that's the denominator of your exponent fraction. So now that we have a, a clear exponent, that two-thirds can come out front. Two-thirds times log x. Okay. Here are several problems here. Notice they say write the expression as the sum or difference of logs. So looking at these, every one of the problems on this page, they wrote log one time. They want us to expand it so we write the word log several times, as many times as possible to spread these out. Okay. In a minute we're going to do some that ask for the reverse of that. The next page, we have multiple logs, and we're going to rewrite as a single log. In other words, we're going to condense it down so we only write log one time. Okay, so it's two sides of the same coin. When we get to 4.5 and start solving equations, there's times where it's handy to go from one log to multiple, and there's times where it's handy to go from multiple logs to one single log. 
So we need to be able to go both directions. All right, so this one right here, if I'm going to split this up, I'll have log base A of A to the 6th plus log base A of B to the 8th. I've got a, a to the 6th and B to the 8th being multiplied, so I can split that into two logs if I put a plus in between. Then I've got power properties. I can pull those exponents down front. So 6 times log base A of A plus 8 times log base A of B. And notice log base A of A is going to be 1 because the base and the argument are the same thing. So that leaves 6 times 1 plus 8 log base A of B. Well, 6 times 1 is 6. So 6 plus 8 times log base A of B. I can't do anything with the log base A of B because the argument and the base are not the same number. They're different. So this is the best I can do. Be careful. One mistake that sometimes I see people make here is they want to add 6 and 8 and get 14. This is not an 8 that's free to be added. It's not single, ready to mingle with the 6, okay? 8 is a coefficient of this term. It'd be like if you wanted to say 3 plus 4x. You can't call it 7x, okay, because this 4 is a coefficient of something else. So same idea here. 6 and 8 can't add because 8 is a coefficient of something else, okay? Next one, notice... This one's a quotient, so we can separate into two logs if we keep the top part, 10c to the third. I'm going to put parentheses to show that whole thing is one argument. Minus log d. Okay. I can split it up a little further. This is a product here, so I can split that up to log 10 plus log c cubed. This part right here split up into two. Since there was a product, I could split them into two logs that were being added. I still have my minus log D. And there's one more, actually two more things I can do. Here's a case where the base and the uh, argument are the same. So that, of course, is 1. Log 10 is 1, just like ln of E is 1. And then this exponent can come in front of this log. So plus 3 log C minus log D. Same thing here. I can split apart the 5z from the w. Okay. Um, I'm going to do this a little faster, though. One little trick that I could have used here, if I was really thinking about it, I could have gone from this line straight to the second line. I could have said, hey, 10 and c cubed are being multiplied, so I can separate them right now into log 10 plus log c to the third. And then I, because my D is on the bottom, I would have minus log D. So some people can recognize how to skip this first step and go straight to here, and that's fine. And I'm going to try that on this one. Since I've got multiple pieces here, I'm going to say, okay, log base 3 of 5 plus log base 3 of Z. So those are being multiplied, and then it's being divided by the W one, so minus log base 3 of W. I probably should have written that, spread it out a little bit better there log base 3 of 5 plus log base 3 of z minus log base 3 of w. And that saves me from having to, to separate the 5 and the z separately in a minute. Okay? Using that same idea here, I know that anything on top, those are being added. Anything on the bottom, those were being subtracted off. So log base 7 of a, okay, or if you wanted to call it ac, you could minus log base 7 of 5d. Okay, now notice log base 7 of a plus log base 7 of c, because a and c, they were being multiplied on top, so add them, minus log base 7 of 5, and I'm going to put another minus log base 7 of d. Sometimes people are confused of why, why that's a minus. They go, oh, but 5 and d were being multiplied. You're right, 5 and d are multiplied, but this minus was applying to both parts. So in other words, I minus the log base 7 of 5, but when I did plus log base 7 of d, that minus applied to it as well, so it got subtracted. That's why I, a lot of times, just like to look at this piece right here, and I know that anything on the top, the a and the c, both had pluses. They are both positive. And anything on the bottom, the 5 and the d, those were being divided by, so I need a minus for both the 5 one and the d one. Okay, so sometimes it's easier just to think of it that way. Okay, all right, 24, they switch over to some LNs, so LNX squared plus LNY, 
This 2 can come out front, so 2 ln x plus ln y. I don't think we can do anything else there. Uh, here, I would probably rewrite this as ln of x to the 2 thirds. Hopefully, you're comfortable with the 2 thirds over w plus z. I'm putting that whole thing in parentheses to show that was my argument. So, I've got ln of x to the 2 thirds minus ln of w plus z. That entire denominator was on the bottom, so that part's being subtracted. My 2 thirds can come out front. 2 thirds ln x minus ln w plus z. Sometimes people want to separate this w and z, but we can't. We cannot separate the w and the z because that whole thing is being minus. It's not a times or, or a division in there. Okay. This one I would call log base 2 of uh, 4x over yz to the third, and I would write that as to the 1 half. Okay, I want people to realize that 1 half applies to all of it. Okay, so watch what happens. When that 1 half comes out front, 1 half log base 2. All right, let me do that where you can see that better. Okay, so I rewrote my 4x over yz cubed. Instead of with the square root, I wrote it with a 1 half. So that 1 half comes in front of the log base 2. Okay, log base 2 of 4x over yz cubed. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to keep my 1 half, and I'm going to separate all these pieces. The 4 and the x are going to have pluses in front of each of them or be positive. The y and the z cubed are going to be minus in front of each of them because they're on the denominator. So I'm going to have log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of x minus log base 2 of y minus log base 2 of z cubed. Now, I'm going to put parentheses around that whole thing, and here's why. That 1 half is applying to this entire log thing. So this 1 half has to apply to all of these pieces. So I need to put parentheses around them so the 1 half goes to all of them. Okay? I'm going to do that in just a minute. I'm going to see what I can do to simplify these on my own. Log base 2 of 4, that's going to be a number. 2 squared is 4, so that's a 2. Plus log base 2 of x, I don't think I can do anything with that. Minus log base 2 of y, I don't think I can do anything with that. And then the last part here with the z cubed, that 3 can come front, come down in front as a coefficient. So minus 3 log base 2 of z, and I don't think I can do anything with that. Now, when you distribute your 1 half, you would have 1 half times 2, which is 1, plus 1 half log base 2 of x, minus 1 half log base 2 of y, minus 3 halves log base 2 of z. And I think that's the best that we can do. That one's a messy one. That's a tricky one. Okay. All right, 27. I don't know if I can get on my work in that little spot. Yeah, I bet I can. I bet I can. Okay. So 27, again, we've got multiple pieces. All the ones on the top would have pluses in between. All the ones on the bottom would have minuses. So log base 8 of 64 plus log base 8 of x squared plus log base 8 of y. And then all the bottom pieces would be subtracted off from the, the total there. So minus log base 8 of 3 minus log base 8 of z minus log base 8 of w cubed. Okay. And then a few of these we can do something else with. For instance, log base 8 of 64 is the number 2 because 8 squared is 64. This 2, that's an exponent on the x squared, can come in front. So plus 2 log base 8 of x plus log base 8 of y uh, minus log base 8 of 3. Now, log base 8 of 3 is a number, but it's going to be an ugly one. It's going to be some terrible decimal because 8 to the some awful decimal is where the 3 would come from. I have to wrap around here. Minus log base 8 of z. And then this exponent 3 on the w can, can co come down front using that power uh, property. So minus 3 log base 8 of w. And I think that's about the best that we can do there. Okay, 
write a single log. So we talked about these. They've given us multiple logs. We're going to combine them. All right, so anything with pluses we know would be the top part. Anything with a minus is on the bottom. So log, we know the base here is 10. 5 times 2. I know it's times 2 because that log part was being added. Divided by 3. I know the 3 was being divided because it had a minus. And then I can clean that up to 10 thirds. So there's the single log there. Coefficient in front of this log, the 1 half. So I can raise that as my exponent. So I'd have log of 49 to the 1 half plus log 3 squared. Again, this exponent of, I'm sorry, coefficient of 2 would become the exponent on your 3. Okay, well, raising something to the 1 half means taking the square root. So this is really log of square root 49 plus log of 3 squared, which is 9. Square root of 49 is 7. So this is log 7 plus log 9. And now we have nice pretty numbers there, and the logs are being added, so we know that's the same thing as log of 7 times 9, and 7 times 9 is 63. So this is kind of weird, but if you typed in your calculator, 0.5 log 49 plus 2 log 3, it's a terrible, horrible number, but log 63 is the same terrible, horrible number. So I know that these two things are actually equal to each other, just different ways of writing it. And isn't it a lot friendlier to write log 63 than this you know, mess that we started with here? Okay. Um, again, I know this is a minus, so I know they're going to be divided, but I want to deal with any coefficients first. So this 5 will be my exponent, and this 7 will be an exponent. So ln x to the 5th minus ln y to the 7th, now I can combine them to a single log, ln x to the fifth over y to the seventh. And that's a single argument there. No coefficients to be raised as exponents, but we are subtracting, so that means it's a quotient. 4x minus 3 over x. There's my single log. Uh, here's a, a coefficient, so it will become an exponent. Log base 2 of z plus log base 2 of y to the fourth. Since they're being added, I know I can write it as a single log, log base 2 of z times y to the fourth. And I personally like to put parentheses to tell people, hey, that entire z, y to the fourth, that whole thing is the argument, just so people don't accidentally think that it's like this, where only the z is the argument and the y to the fourth is not. We don't want people to think that. So I like to put my whole argument in parentheses. Okay. All right, I've got some coefficients, so those will become exponents. So ln x cubed plus ln x minus 2 minus ln 5. The positive ones are my numerator, so x to the third times x minus 2. The subtracted logs are in the quotient. Okay, and again, I can put that whole argument in parentheses. Uh, you could distribute the 3 if you wanted. If you wanted to call it ln of x to the 4th minus 2x cubed all over 5, that would be okay as well. Um, you know, either one's okay. All right, this one's kind of messy. So uh, notice here that if I distribute the 2, 2 ln x minus 2 ln x squared, plus two-thirds ln z to the ninth minus ln z. Okay. Um, coefficients can be raised to exponents, so I'll have ln x squared. Now notice what happens when I have this 2. When this 2 gets raised, I have x squared to the second. Right, when I bring that 2 up onto the x squared, well, when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply those exponents. So this is going to be minus ln x to the fourth, because when we have a power to a power, we multiply the exponents. Okay, so for the z's, we have z to the ninth, and when that 2 thirds gets raised, we'll have 9 times 2 thirds. Well, 9 times 2 thirds, let's see, 9 times 2 thirds would be 18 over 3, which is 6. If you didn't know that, if you had trouble multiplying those uh, 9 times the 2 thirds, you can use your calculator. 9 times 2 thirds, I tell you, is 6. So this is going to be plus ln z to the 6th. 
minus ln z. All right. The positive ones we know are in the, the numerator. The subtraction ones are in the denominator. All right, so I've got an x squared on top, but I've got an x to the fourth on the bottom because that log was being subtracted. I've got a z to the sixth on top because that log was being added. And I've got a plain z on the bottom because that log was being subtracted. Now I'm just going to clean these up a little bit. Ln, I've got two x's on top and two on the bottom, so that's going to simplify to an x squared on the bottom. I've got six z's on top and one on the bottom, so the one on the bottom cancels and leaves five z's on the top. So that one was a messy one. That might have been one of the more challenging ones. That's what we end up with. Okay. And the last one in this group. Um, I'm going to leave the negative out front, but I'm going to only move the 2 to the top. So I'm going to have negative log base 5 of x plus 5 squared. Okay, so my x plus 5 receives that 2 for the exponent. I'm going to leave that negative. Okay, for just a minute you'll see why. Plus log base 5 of x plus log base 5 of x squared minus 25. Okay, the reason I left that negative on the front one is because now when I'm ready to combine them into one big log with log base 5, since this one had a negative, that x plus 5 squared is going to be on the bottom because any, any of the logs that were being subtracted meant that was in the denominator of my, my quotient here, okay? The positive ones, the positive logs, those are a product on top. So this x will stay in top, and this x squared minus 25 will stay on top. Okay? All right, looking good. Now here's where our algebra skills and factoring and all that comes back into play. What this is saying right here is that we have an x, and then x squared minus 25 will factor. Remember, it'll factor to x plus 5 x minus 5. Remember, x squared minus 25 would factor. On the bottom, we have x plus 5 squared. That means there's two sets of x plus 5. Well, notice what happens. There's an x plus 5 on top and bottom. So those cancel and leave us with log base 5 of x times x minus 5 over x plus 5. That whole thing is my final. So my x and my x minus 5 were left on top, and then I had a single x plus 5 on the bottom. That one's a messy one. If you want to distribute that x on the top and call it x squared minus 5x, you could. Okay, and the very last part, I think we mentioned the term obsolete before in class, but I uh, kind of want to give you a brief, very brief history because I know you're getting tired. Um, Back in the day, before we had graphing calculator, calculators, if you wanted to know what log base 3 of 9 was, you would have to think about that in your head. You'd have to say, okay, 3 to the something equals 9, and you'd think about it, and you'd go, oh, 2. Well, that's great if it's whole numbers. But if it's not, if it's log base 5 of 12, well, who knows what that is? And the top of their head, 5 to the something has to equal 12. Who knows what number that is, okay? So we had something called log tables, okay, because we didn't have graphing calculators. We had a log table, okay? And, but in order to look it up, you would need a log base 5 table and a log base 7 table and a log base 2 and a log base 10 and a log base 83 and all kinds of different um, bases. You need a table for every one of them, and that would be just ridiculous. So what they needed was a way to have one table that people could use. And that's what a log table is. I don't have one handy, but um, they're kind of obsolete now anyway. So what they did was they made one log table and it was base 10. That's why we have just the log button right here and it implies base 10, okay? So what you would do is you would look up log 12, log base 10 of 12, and you would look up log 5, log base 10 of 5, and you would divide them. And whatever that came out to be, that's the same thing. In other words, if I were to take uh, log base 3 of 9, log base 3 of 9, we know that's going to come out to be 2, but 
on your log tables, if you didn't know that that was 2, you would look up log 9, so it's log base 10 of 9, and then you would look up log 3, log base 10 of 3, and you would divide them. So watch this, log 9 divided by log 3, and I get the same answer. Okay, so that's due to the properties of logs. You can look in your in your book for a proof of it if you want to. Okay, but back in the day when we didn't have uh, log tables, that's what we would have to do is we would look up our table log nine, we would look up log three, and we could divide them. Okay, and they came up with a shortcut, a better table that you didn't have to do that. But um, that's kind of what would happen. Okay, so I realize that this is 2019, and we can just type log base four of eight in our calculator. But they're just trying to prove to you that even though you can type log base 4 of 8 in your calculator and get the answer, you could also do log 8 divided by log 4 and you would get the same answer. Okay? And so this property right here is called the change of base formula. In other words, you could change the base from 4 to 10. I've changed the base from 4 to 10. When I type log 8, that's changing it to base 10. And then log 4, I'm changing it to base 10. And then when I divide them, it comes out the same. Okay? So, so log base 4 of 8 is 1.5. But if I had just typed in log 8 divided by log 4, I get the same thing. Notice that you need to make sure you put your parentheses around your 8 when you typed it in. Log 8, close parentheses, divided by log 4. Okay. Now, if you think about it, that's a logical answer because 4 to the something had to equal 8. Well, 4 to the 1 is 4. 4 to the second is 16. Since 8 is between 4 and 16, we knew our answer had to be between 1 and 2. And here's one that worked out to be just 1.5. Okay. Um, so here... Again, you could type in log base 3 of 5, but back in the day, we would have had to do log 5 divided by log 3. Okay, and when you type that in, you get and they say four decimal places, so 1.4650. Okay, now um, I think there's a homework question that they kind of ask you hey, 3 to the something, like 3 to the 1 is 3, 3 to the second is 9. So since 5 is in between 3 to the 9, you know your answer is going to be between 1 and 2. So it makes sense that it comes out to be this. If you want to check your answer, doesn't this mean 3 to the something equals 5? And we think it's 1.45, whatever. So in my calculator, I could type 3 to the, and I could retype this, or I can arrow up and just grab that 1.4 number. And when I work that out, I get, I get basically 5. The reason it's not exactly 5 is just because of rounding. So that's a way that you can check. And I think the homework question asks you to do that as well, is check. Okay? All right, so again, you can, you can just type this as it is in your calculator. I know that. Or you could type log 15 divided by log 7. And when you do that, you get 1.3917. If you wanted to check, 7 to the 1.3917, sure enough, is pretty much 15. Due to rounding, it's a little off. And the last one, and it's because 5 to the something has to make 0.3, it's probably going to have to be a negative exponent in order to lower that value to the 0.3. All right, that video is kind of long. Sorry about that. Hopefully that helps you and you're able to complete all of your homework for 4.4. Thanks.